Peter, death is never a pleasant subject to talk about, but it is obviously the core of evolution. What can we learn about death as it applies to how we live our lives from death and evolution? Something that surprised me a bit when thinking about the nature of life and death uh, in the human case is the extent to which the, the shape of human life is a particular kind of evolutionary product and lots of other organisms don't have births and deaths in the same way we do. I mean, they can all, they can all die, but the, uh, the process by which a human life goes along uh, from a discrete birth through stages in which there's reproduction, possibly, and then a process of senescence where we get older and head towards mm. what feels like something like a natural terminus, that's very optional. There are lots of organisms that do, do things quite differently. Uh, in the case of bacteria, for example, it's unclear at cell division mm -hmm, whether yeah. you have the death of a parent and two new offspring, or whether you have one parent, a parent continuing and a, a, a daughter being born, but which one, which one is it? Uh, there's a kind of jellyfish that goes along through a sort of maturational sequence to what looks like an adult, and then it can go backwards again yeah. uh, and return to earlier, what we would think of as earlier life stages, and then forward again. The shape of human life with the kinds of beginnings and ends that our lives have is a, conting is a contingent evolutionary product, and, and other organisms do things differently. And so what, what can that inform us about our sense of death? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's supposed to be outside the thing, yeah. <laughs> I don't really have an answer to that. Uh, please, <laughs> you'll probably use this. Um, I feel that's a really good question, and uh, I'm writing a book that will have a chunk on that, but this is one of the parts of the book that's proving a bit resistant at the moment. I feel there has to be an answer.